the biggest thing that I would just want people to remember is that you're a real person who has their struggles, but everybody has their struggles. And it doesn't mean you're any less valuable of a person or worthy to take up that space because of your skin and the issues that you might be dealing with with your skin at any one moment. Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome to episode number 58 of the Healthy Skin Show. Today, I'm going to have a guest on with me. Actually, she's a friend of mine who struggled with tinea versa color earlier in life, and she wanted to share her experience and how that showed up for her and what it was like growing up with it. That said, today, she's a real life inspiration for so many women out there. And I feel so lucky that we became friends and that she was willing to come on the podcast and talk about this because I feel like when you're going through skin issues, and especially as even as we age, it can be more difficult to find a sense of confidence in life. And so I love the message that she's bringing to the table. And I thought this was the perfect time to have her on the show. Before we dive into the interview, I wanted to answer a listener's question. This is another written question. So I'm going to read it for Lisa. Lisa, thanks so much for writing in. She says, I have eczema on the palm of my hands, and it seems like my nails are really starting to get messed up. Is it possible that my eczema and the issues with these nails of mine are connected? Yes, it is entirely possible that the eczema that you're experiencing is playing a role in the way that the nails are now forming. From what I understand, eczema that goes up not just the sides, but also the back side of the finger. So the side that we tend to show to the world, not our palm side. That inflammation caused by the eczema can actually disrupt the ability of the nail matrix to form the nail correctly. And oftentimes that will result in a wavy or disfigured nail. When I was in the midst of dealing with my own hand eczema or dyshydratic eczema, my nails became very disfigured, especially on the fingers that were the worst affected. And it was incredibly frustrating because there wasn't really much that I could do. Now, here's the thing. It is definitely possible that if you're experiencing nail changes or changes to the shape of your fingers, say there's clubbing that's happening to the fingers, or the nails have a very distinct look or pattern to them, it's also wise to get checked by a doctor because that can happen due to the result of specific nutrient deficiencies that could really be important and something you need to look into and address. So while yes, if you have hand eczema, it is possible and it unfortunately happens to a lot of people that the nails begin to get really messed up also double check that there's nothing else going on underneath the surface. And what I tend to find in my clinical practice is that people, even myself, who are struggling with this, do have some sort of level of nutrient deficiencies present, regardless of how well they eat. And oftentimes that happens as a result of poor absorption. Either way, double check that there's nothing really, really serious that may be going on aside from just the eczema and the inflammation that it's causing. But this is the other thing to keep in mind. And this is so frustrating, but I want to tell you guys the truth because you deserve to know and it's not good to give people false hope. My nails did eventually grow back out correctly. Only after all of the skin smoothed back out. So that was kind of frustrating because I wasn't sure if the nails were eventually going to grow back out. That said, it took a really long time. For a nail to grow out from start to finish takes about six months. That means that you've got to get all those puzzle pieces in place and correct in order to get the skin to rebuild correctly. Once that has all kind of settled itself down, then your nails are able to grow back out correctly. You wouldn't know by looking at my nails today that there was any issue with them. However, in the midst of things and for a six, I would almost say six to eight month period after 
my skin finally calmed down and stopped flaring, that's when I started to see the nail come back in correctly. So it took time. And I just want to give everybody some hope that it's not an immediate thing. So if you don't see an immediate change, don't freak out. It's just the nails take longer to grow than your skin does to rebuild. I hope this is helpful for you, especially if you're in the midst of dealing with this and you're really frustrated that your nails have been impacted by your skin issues. With that said, let's dive into today's interview. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to The Healthy Skin Show. Today, I've got a good friend who's joining me. Um, Truth be told, it's a friend that I've spent quite a bit of time with in person and um, a lot of time chatting back and forth online. We live on different sides of the country, but she's someone who I looked up to for a long time and feel very grateful that I can call her a friend. And then to just have her here and share her wisdom and her experience with you is truly a gift. Her name is Steph Gudro. She believes that women have the right to be strong and take up space because the world needs our voices. She's a nutritional therapy consultant, strength coach, best-selling author, podcaster, and Lord of the Rings nerd. <laughs> and she lives in San Diego, California with her wonderful cat. We share that as well. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Steph. I appreciate it. Oh, thanks so much for having me. It's so good to be here and to celebrate this show that you are you have and all the great things that you're doing in your business. It's amazing. I know. It's really nice that we get this opportunity to connect with people out there who feel very stuck. And that's one reason that I wanted to have you on the show today is to share your experience with skin issues that you've dealt with in the past because... I know when I dealt with my issues, I felt really alone. I felt very embarrassed and ashamed, and I didn't know anybody else that was going through it. So can you talk a little bit about what the skin issue you had um, and when did it start? Yeah. Oh, gosh. I didn't even I think the first I ever learned about Tinea Versicolor is because my mom had it. And <laughs> I got I've gotten a lot of things from my mom and Tinea is one of them, but you know, I, I didn't ever, I noticed that she would get these darker patches on her skin, these almost circular, it almost looks like a flat rash and it's not red, but it's just a discoloration and it can get kind of red, but I would always notice that she would have this discoloration. So in the winter time, sometimes it would appear like darker on her light skin and then the reverse would happen in the summer. Those spots would stay very white. And so I knew relatively early on that this was just something she had, but I didn't really know what it was. And the first time she ever explained to me that it's a fungus, I think I was like, oh, wow, okay, that's gross. <laughs> and, and that's pretty much all I knew about tinea. And then I ended up getting tinea myself. And again, I, had, I didn't make the connection back to watching her go through it when I was a kid. Um, and then I sort of started, I noticed I was developing these patches of discoloration, again, sort of darker uh, tan color, but in spots. And this gave me a really interesting insight into what it's like to have conditions like vitiligo because, and this is a very different situation than that, but I became extremely self-conscious of this because I would get it mostly on my shoulders is where it would show up a lot. And then, you know, around my, where my sports bra would be obviously because of fungus and warmth and being in the gym and stuff like that. But to have it so prominent, especially during the summer where those spots would essentially like get bleached out on my skin as my skin got a little bit tan in the summer. And I was really self-conscious of this. So I have finally had to go to the doctor and figure out what is this thing. And the doctor said, okay, well, this is, this is tinea versicolor. This is a fungus. It lives on everybody, but for some reason, and some people it just overgrows and that's why you get these patches. But the treatments either are like folk treatments that are at the time, you know, all I could find was, well, you know, put apple cider vinegar on it or um, go on these really heavy duty medications. So 
I ended up sort of not knowing what to do. And one of the things that I kind of went for the middle solution, which was it's a shampoo or like a cream that you put on. It's a, almost like a liquid and it smells it's very sulfury. It doesn't smell very good. And that took care of it. But it came back and it's come back a few times since I had it the first time. The last time I had it, again, I spend a lot of time in a gym. I do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. We're constantly sweaty. I mean, I change out of my sweaty clothes as soon as I can. I think that's probably the number one thing that I've learned is to uh, make sure you're not sitting around in sweaty clothes. But the last time I went to the doctor um, and I said, hey, I have this thing called Tinea Versicolor and it's back and all the things I've tried to get rid of it on my own haven't worked. You know, what do you, what solutions do you have for me? And so I was offered, again, this, you know, shampoo. I was offered a, uh, a sort of like a spray that I could put in my hair. And then I was offered a pill, which was essentially the equivalent of an antibiotic, but an antifungal pill. And when I asked my friend, who's a doctor, what I thought, oh, well, this seems a little bit extreme to take this pill and when I asked my friend who's a doctor, you know, what is this medication? And she just thought, well, if you want to obliterate your gut, then go ahead and take that. And I said, no way. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I just think that there's not a whole lot of knowledge out there about what it is. And being that I work at the time I was working at a gym, I would come into contact with a lot of people. I'd see a lot of people. You see a lot of people's bodies because they're wearing tank tops or they're shirtless or it's a CrossFit setting. I would notice Occasionally, I'd see people that would have the telltale spots of tinea, and I would go, you know, I'd ask them, do you, do you know what this is? And they'd be like, I don't, I have no idea. I've had this my whole life, or I've had it for a really long time. I'm really embarrassed by it. You know, I usually want to cover up because it, it's ugly. Um, it's, it, it, I just don't want to show it. And so I would tell them, well, this is the thing called tinea versicolor, and they had never heard of what it was. So that's just something that I've had to deal with pretty much on and off. And luckily now I don't have it. Um, it comes back every once in a while, but now I know that there are certain things I can do. Um, and then for me as well, I would get really flaky in my scalp. And then of course we have that association of dandruff or like that you're dirty because you don't wash your hair. You know, it just brings up a lot of stuff for people. And it brought up a lot of stuff for me where it, it's not something that's really, you know, it's not disabling for me, but it does, when it, it comes out, it does make me more self-conscious about my skin and how I look and stuff like that. And it's interesting too, because everything that you do and the one thing that, that I love, I mean, there's many things I love that you put out into the world is that you offer people this way to embrace who they are and share their thoughts and just take up space <laughs> instead of feeling like you have to hide. And I know for myself, I didn't have that, but I would hide because it was on my hands and people shake hands. And so in this particular case, like you said, it's embarrassing if you have, you want to go out swimming, if you want to go to the beach, if it's just really hot and you can't bear to have that area covered, if you're at the gym, any number of things. Um, it's just really interesting that there is shame, no matter what type of skin condition you have, that seems to be woven into it. It's like this traumatic experience that results because you end up with something where your skin is not showing up perfectly. And, yeah. um, do you think in now in hindsight, cause it's sort of behind you, so to speak, and you also have a much different perspective on your life and health and whatnot, do you have any words of wisdom to maybe share with everybody who's listening who right now is still stuck in that phase of like, they're really embarrassed and they feel a sense of shame about their skin? Yeah. I mean, I think the thing that resonates for me is something that I learned from Brene Brown, which is, you know, guilt is, is sort of like when you feel bad because you did something and shame is when you feel bad because you're a bad person. And where does that, you know, where do we in our journeys when we experience things like skin issues, where does that transfer over from something we just feel, we feel bad about the thing to feeling bad about ourselves? 
And I don't know where that line is for different people. And I don't even know if you can pinpoint one event, although I'm sure for a lot of folks, there is like one thing that happened to them. Somebody made a comment, somebody even, you know, they had the perception that somebody looked at them strangely, that they, they were staring or they looked away or, you know, those things we can internalize them, even if that's not what the person was intending. And I think even from my husband and his eczema, um, all the things that he's dealt with, the biggest thing that I would just want people to remember is that you're you're a whole person, you're a real person who has their struggles, but everybody has their struggles. And it doesn't mean you're any less valuable of a person or worthy to take up that space because of your skin and the issues that you might be dealing with with your skin at any one moment. And that there is power in your story, that there is, you know, when and Brittany Brown also talks about this, like when we name the thing that we're, we feel ashamed about, we take away its power. And I think, you know, that doesn't mean everybody necessarily needs to become a blogger or de- devote a social media account <laughs> to their condition. But I think the more we can open up about that and the more we can be, we can use our voice and say, you know, these are the things that I'm going through, the more it normalizes it. And you'd be surprised how many people will come out of the woodwork and say, you know, I also had this or I dealt with this too, or I had something similar and it really affected me. And thanks for making me feel not so alone. So the more we can share, the more we can just step into that, I think the better. And I know that's not always the case. We sometimes want to run and hide um, or hide ourselves away because we have this perception that people are going to make judgments about us. And, and you're very right on about that. Spot on, I would say. I know I constantly felt like a leper, basically. Um, I just, I thought I was literally going to have to stop teaching. I wasn't going to be able to go out anymore. I had to stop exercising. I had to do a lot of different things, not just because of the shame, but also the pain that I was physically mm-hmm. in. So, um, and, and that's what another thing I wanted to talk about, too. So you have this new book which I think is honestly one of the best, most practical, most reasonable, like I even learned from it, um, (laughs) of how to make changes over the course of, um, it's what, about 21 days, 30 days, something like that. Yeah, about 30 days, yeah. The thing that's nice about it is that A, there's really no dogmatic nonsense in it that leads to further food fear. Cause I feel like a lot in like the wellness world, especially, but even in the skin world, people get outside of the just dermatologist cycle and they're like, okay, what's the next thing I can do that can help me. And they get stuck in this idea that it's all about food and they start micromanaging every little thing that they eat, thinking that that's going to fix it. And they end up on very tiny diets. And I think what you offer people is a really smart way to start making simple changes when you haven't really cleaned up your diet. And on top of it, adding in some movement that if you're uncomfortable right now going to the gym, because I know like I couldn't go to the gym. I didn't want ever, anybody to see this. And if people saw me touching equipment, my hands are all messed up. They would freak out. So you have this really great book with also these fitness things, um, fitness routines or uh just exercises in them that you can do at home and you don't really need yeah. any, you don't really need much equipment at all. Um, do you want to just talk a little bit about what the book is about so that if people are like, Hey, mm-hmm. I don't really know what to do next, but I know I need to start making changes. I, I, I would love for them to, to learn more. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for the kind words. That means a lot. I know that there are tons of books on the market that talk about, nutrition and fitness and what goes on in between your ears with your own thinking. And I really aim to provide something that was a little bit against the grain. So like you said, a lot of people have been through so many restrictive diets. They've just been focusing on cutting things out. They've used exercise to punish themselves for what they eat, or they just feel like the barrier to entry is so high that they can't get started. And one of my favorite things to do is to like chunk it down so that it's so easy that, I mean, it almost seems like too easy, right? Like how, like, is that going to do anything? Um, And yes, I think for myself working with so many people over the years, I see that most people want to make gradual change. We have to honor where people are at in their lives. 
the access that they have to certain resources and equipment and food even and that and, and acknowledge as coaches that not everybody is in the same position. So I really wanted to make something that was accessible and that would help people learn how to add in some of these habits and almost like test drive certain things that they can then put into this toolbox and reach back into later on. Maybe the time's not right for them to exercise now, or maybe it is, and they want to figure out how they can work this into their lives. I mean, a lot of the women in my community are busy moms or they're in the, in their workplace. They don't have three hours to go to the gym every day. And so the constant thought is, well, unless I can do hours and hours, then I, why bother? You know, I'm not able to do as much as someone else or the people that I see on social media. So I really wanted to create something that was approachable, that would give people real sustainable, lasting behavior change. Because, I mean, you can do anything for a week, really, but what, what can you do what are the skills, the habits, what are the behaviors, what are the the rituals that you can keep doing for a long period of time? I'm not interested in what you can do for a week. I want to know that in five years, maybe you're not doing the same exact things, but you've really found a way to incorporate good, nutritious food into your life that also allows you to enjoy social situations and being able to go out with people that, you know, enjoying life, being like just having health as a goal, like where you're just working on your health all the time. Certainly there are times where that's going to require more time and attention. And then the idea is that you develop those patterns, you develop those habits that you can carry forward with you. And that health isn't healthing. I call it healthing so hard, like healthing so hard, isn't your focus. It's I'm living my life and I'm able to incorporate things that really make me feel good on a daily basis. So I, you know, one of the things I do is I have in that program or in this book, a whole sequence that you can use for this 30 days. That's, you can do it at home with a couple sets of dumbbells and like a bench or something sturdy, like a sturdy chair. And I actually do these workouts on my front porch all the time because sometimes I don't go to the gym and I just want to get a quick workout. So, you know, you can stop right now, go do that, spend a half hour, come back in. You don't have to commute. Um, you can watch your kids, they can do it with you. I mean, I just wanted to make it really accessible and really flexible for people with the intention of getting away from the strictness and the idea that building health has to be hard and it has to be something that we can never enjoy. And that exercise, it's only supposed to hurt, like it can't be enjoyable. And that the ultimate goal for me is to help people build their health and Weight loss is sometimes an outcome from that, but sometimes it's not. And I try to be real honest and upfront with people about that too, is can you build this sense of inner strength? Can you feel good on a daily basis? Can you add to your health in a way that you're able to fully enjoy your life? And if I can help you accomplish that, then I feel like I've done my job. Yeah. And this is perfect. As I said, for people that are struggling right now, especially if you're at the beginning of your food transition out of a diet where you just like don't care and eat anything to something that's way healthier and it's sustainable too. I love that all the meals are very practical. You don't have to be a chef. Um, and then also too, like I said, the fact that you could do these exercises, that was the one thing I was really impressed. I was like, I could do these at home. This is so great because I don't need to I'm not comfortable, say, you know, like when I was in the midst of this, I wouldn't go into the gym. That was that was done. Yeah. That got taken away from me. And so to be able to do some movement at home to help deal with stress, because movement is great for relaxing, but also, I mean, you don't always have to use weight either. It can just be mm -hmm. body weight. Um, and I love that you're able to, you're, you're guiding people through that and giving them these options because those two pieces, the food and the movement are important no matter where you are on your journey. Absolutely. And so I just want to remind everybody that Steph also has a fantastic podcast. It's great for mm -hmm. mindset. <laughs> it's not PG. So just keep that <laughs> in mind. Some of you love like the PG thing. Um, it's not PG, but I will say I was very blessed to be a guest on her Harder to Kill radio show. Um, 
earlier this year. And I'll link the, that episode here so you can also check that out. But she's also just got a lot of encouragement and wisdom that she shares in a very real way that, again, the idea of it's OK to take up space. You don't have to feel like you have to shrink from your life and you don't deserve to be in your life anymore because of what's happening to you. And I think that's that's a lesson and a reminder and um, wisdom that we need repeated over and over and over again as you move through your journey. Um, and Steph, everyone can find you over at stephgudrow.com. We will put the links to all of that. You're also on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. You've got a YouTube channel and you've got a great gift for everybody. It is your five day healthy habits kickstart. Um, and that may be a really great way to get involved in what stuff has to offer because she's also a lot of different fitness programs and things like that that you can stream online. Um, is there anything else? Like we've got the book, the core four book that is now available. And so you can get that on Amazon and probably in most other places, right? Yeah, pretty much everywhere you can get books. <laughs> awesome. And we'll put a link to that. So we'll make it really easy in the show notes for you to find all of these resources from Steph, connect with her. Um, and I'm, I feel so lucky that I get to share all of you with Steph um, because she has been a real inspiration for me over the last few years. And she's also got a lot of great recipes over on her website as well. It's just, it is a wealth. Her, <laughs> her website is a wealth of knowledge. So I know that you will love it. Thanks so much, Steph, for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I appreciate that. I hope that you've enjoyed the conversation with my friend Steph. Know this, not only is the book itself amazing, but one of the things that's completely blown me away about it is that her book has been number one on multiple lists before it even was released, which is truly a feat in and of itself. Steph is one of the most genuine, honest, and amazing people that I know, and I consider her a very good friend. And I hope that if her message resonates with you, you go check her out, support her work, go check out the book, and hopefully too, this will give you the confidence or at least start to help you find that confidence to get back out there and find and foster the type of life that will really help you thrive. All of the links are going to be in the show notes for this episode. You can head on over to skinterrupt.com forward slash 058 and grab yourself a copy or leave us a question or comment. We'd love to continue the conversation with you over there. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the show. And if you haven't done so yet, rate and review the podcast on your podcast platform of choice. All right, guys. I wish you a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in the next episode.